Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, I'm about to do a rehash of a hashtag that I did about a year ago. About a year ago, I did a VR to Artecracht Earth Power, which is a YouTube creator in the Netherlands. Uh, she created a wonderful introspective spread of five questions. And so I did a VR of that. And um, recently, a viewer stumbled upon that VR and in the comments suggested that it was interesting and that it might be something I'd consider doing again a year later and see how it's different. Um, and maybe even doing it on an annual basis. And I thought that was a good idea. So that's what I'm going to do. The first time I did this VR, I used two decks. I used the Intuitive Tarot by Siliconway, and I used the uh, Deviant Moon by Patrick Valenza. This time, I decided to select two sister decks. At least to me, that's what they are, sister decks. Oak, Ash, and Thorn, and Smoke, Ash, and Ember. I think they would work beautifully together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the first set of questions and my personal selections from Oak, Ash, and Thorn. So I will draw the responses that I think are correct from this deck. And then I'm going to turn the camera down and I'm going to let the deck, Smoke, Ash, and Ember, answer the questions for me. And I'll compare my ideas and the Tarot's ideas of the answers to these questions for me. So friends, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned and we'll take a look at this together. Be back in a minute. Welcome back. So, I have drawn my own responses from the Oak, Ash, and Thorn deck. And first let me tell you what the five prompts are. What are the five questions? The first question is, how does society see you? Second question, how does your family see you? Third question, how do your friends see you? Fourth question, how would you love to be seen? So the first questions are about persona, right? How we present ourselves in the world and what we think society sees, what we think our family sees, what we think our friends see, and then how we wish we were seen. And then the fifth question is, who are you actually? Who are we beside, behind our persona? Wonderful introspective questions. And so let's start with the first card from Okash and Thorn. Okay, so I chose for the first response, how does society see me? The, I actually struggled with this. My first, I was feeling pessimistic yesterday, and my first inclination was to choose the Seven of Swords. I was feeling a little bit negative about myself and the way society seems to be perceiving me, and I chose that. But then I slept on it, and I decided to change my response to the Hierophant, and I love this card in this deck. Now, a lot of tarot readers have a little bit of difficulty with the Hierophant and the Emperor, right? There's that sense of toxic masculinity, I think, that accompanies both of them. But for me, maybe because I'm toxic, toxically masculine, though I don't think that's true, um, I don't have such a problem with the Hierophant or the Emperor. And I particularly like this image for the Hierophant as the owl with the key in the night, that wise old being, the creature. It gives us the very positive aspects of the Hierophant to me. Um, so what does the Hierophant mean? For me, the Hierophant is tradition and um, the teaching of tradition. It's also a spiritual connection. I see the Hierophant and the High Priestess as 
a mated pair, like the emperor and the empress. And the high priestess gives us the idea of our internal, our unconscious connection with the divine. The hierophant, to me, is the conscious connection to the divine. It's all the same divine, it's all a unified connection, but there are different experiences of that connection. One less conscious, one more watery, one more conscious, one perhaps more airy. Yeah? So the hierophant is our conscious, our active connection with the divine. And the high priestess is our unconscious, our emotional connection with the divine. So I see those as read as possible interpretations for this card, but it's also the institutional card for me. The card of institutions and schools and education and teachers, and that's what that's the direction I would read this card for me in the response to this question. How does society see me? I think society sees me as a teacher, as my job. I teach English at a university in South Korea. Um, perhaps even some of my content on YouTube is seen as maybe a little bit of the, the teacher role. Maybe. I don't know. That's something you'd have to answer for me. Um, but I think I'm seen as a teacher, maybe a little bit aloof, maybe a little bit above, maybe a little bit... Um, There's a little bit of a controlling aspect to the Hierophant that I think I may be perceived as having. Though we don't see it so much here. Although we do see that the owl ha has the key on a string, and that string is very neatly held in its beak. It's not going to let that string go very easily. At least that's the way it looks to me. So, I may give off that, as we say, vibe, that I have the key, I have the knowledge, that I'm very interested in sharing with people, but I'm going to be selective as well. Does that make sense? I think that's the way I may be perceived. I don't think that's who I am. I think that's the way society generally sees me. The next question, how does your family see me? And last year I chose the Fool, and then I got some other information which made me feel a little bit less appreciated by my larger family. I'm not just talking about my mom or my father. I don't have any siblings. I'm talking about, when I think of family, I think of extended family. I think of cousins, aunts, uncles, uh, grandparents who are now all deceased. But of my living relatives, in the broadest sense, I get the feeling that I am the Eight of Cups for them. Now, the Eight of Cups, the one who walks away in disappointment. I feel like my fat, because I've been here in Korea for a long time and I haven't been back to Chicago, I feel like my family, and then from reports that I've gotten recently, um, from other parties, I get the feeling that I may be seen as the one who has left the family behind and is just doing what he wants to do. Um, I don't think that they appreciate how my relationship with my mother even. Um, I got some very interesting and disquieting news uh, recently. Um, and so I really get the idea that they feel like I have left it all behind. I've just gone off on my own path. And it's more of an emotional thing than for perhaps, like I suggested, the Seven of Swords. Because that Seven of Swords I, energy has been rolling around inside of my mind um, when looking at this hashtag again. So I get the feeling that my family may be feeling that I have abandoned people, which is interesting because a lot of my life I have felt disconnected, but because I was not sought out. 
and that's a, a large, deep, tangled web of uh, discussion, better saved for another time. But yeah, I do feel like they think that I have abandoned them. So, we'll see what the Tarot says to me. Um, so, how do my friends see me? Especially these days. I don't think they saw me this way in the past. I don't think they saw me this way when I was in my 20s or my 30s, even my 40s even. But I think these days, and maybe mo a lot of us get this feeling too, after COVID. But I think most of my friends see me as a bit of a hermit, as removed, connected a little bit. I mean, I'll shine my lamp in the darkness and send, um, what, signals. <laughs> Like, uh, if you are an American from the United States, you remember the story of Paul Revere, one if by land, two if by sea, yeah? or those flashing lights that people send Morse code with signals? Yeah. From far away, right? The hermit can do something like that, couldn't they? And I love this image of the hermit. Um, with the, instead of a lamp, they've got a, a lightning bug there. There's a staff lying down in the ground next to our hermit hedgehog. The hermit hedgehog is also a little bit protective, and I think my friends feel that I'm that way sometimes. That I'm a little bit self-protective, I may be, I'm a little bit of a recluse, uh, I have my light, but I'm not, in, I may not entirely be sharing that light as fully as they hoped that I would. And again, you know, COVID, it could be just that we're all coming through COVID and that's what has drawn me to this card. So the next question was, how would you love to be seen? And remember how I thought the high priest, the hierophant and the high priestess are a pair? The way I would love to be seen by society, by my friends, by all of you out there in YouTube um, land is the high priestess. And I think I drew this card la last year as well. That's the image I want to project. That's the image, that's the way I want to live in the world. That's the role I would love to serve as the high priestess. And I love this image of the, is this a falcon? I think it's a falcon with a scroll under their wing um, in the moonlight in this very lush tree. Um, the crown of feathers on their head. It's a beautiful card. The whole deck is beautiful. Um, but the High Priestess, to me, is the one who has access to the deep ocean of collective spiritual and uh, historical information of the unconscious and the collective unconscious and the personal unconscious and is able to learn and teach from that, and also guide. I think the High Priestess is not the gatekeeper to the unconscious or that realm, but rather the guide to that realm. And if we come to the High Priestess, and the High Priestess checks us, make sure that, are you, are you ready? And if we are ready, is more than happy to guide us through and into the unconscious, and the collective unconscious, and all the wisdom there. That's how I see the High Priestess, and that's how I would love to be seen. So, this was a difficult one. Who are you actually? And you know the name of my cha channel is, well, that's not the name of my channel, but my nickname, my moniker, is the Hanged Man in the Moon, right? The Hanged Man. So, who am I actually? I think I am actually the Hanged Man. And I think I have been the hanged man ever since at least my teenage years, if not before. What do I think of with the hanged man? And with this card, that's a beautiful image of this poor little rodent creature hanging onto a, um, the stem of a flower in the rain, sheltering itself in the rain, under the canopy of a beautiful flower above it. The hanged man, 
for some it's the traitor, for some it's the one who is um, to be punished or deserves to be punished. For some, it's the one with a new perspective, with a different perspective. One, maybe it could be someone who is sacrificing themselves. I see the hanged man is as the off-the-wall kind of person. The person who doesn't fit into society the way other people might. The one who gets these weird, different thoughts that they think are extraordinarily funny, but other people don't seem to get. The one with a very, a, not twisted in the sense of demented, but off kilter, turned upside down, um, a little bit twisted, again, not in the demented sense, but a little bit twisted perspective of reality. The uncommon, the unconventional, that's how I see the hanged man. And that's why I chose the hanged man as my moniker. The hanged man in the moon. Because the hanged man and the high priestess made no sense. <laughs> so I chose my moniker as the hanged man in the moon, which I also see as a watery card, a card of the unconscious and the intuition and our soft connection with the divine. That's why I chose the hanged man in the moon, and that's why I think I actually am the hanged man. So, those are my choices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera down, and I'm going to lay these cards out, and I'm going to find the response to these questions from Smoke, Ash, and Ember. So, I'll be right back. Okay, friends, so here I am. These are the cards that I chose from the Oak, Ash, and Thorn for the first, for the five questions. I have just shuffled the deck and cut it and am ready to answer the first question from my tarot deck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a card for each question and then I'm going to shuffle it back in just in case it decides to appear in more than one response, because my family could be could possibly see me the same way as my friends see me or the society sees me. Uh, there is a possibility that there is alignment in the way I'm perceived by different groups of people. So I'm going to give that possibility to the Tarot. So this was, again, I shuffled, I cut, and this is my response for how does society see me? Can you see me? Okay, so this is the response, the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so apparently society sees me as having it all, as having the stuff I need, as having, as having the stuff I require and that I can enjoy, right? There's, that, there's also that sense of enjoyment of the things that we have, being satisfied, being grateful for, and being happy with the material resources that we have. In a Pamela Coleman Smith's art, we've got a, a beautifully dressed woman out in her gorgeous garden with a falcon on her arm and um, abundance and wealth and uh, also gratitude. So in this card, we've got a dragon, beautiful dragon. All of the cards in this deck have dragons. Yeah, it's a dragon deck. So a dragon holding a, a pentacle, also being held by a butterfly. So there's a little bit of playfulness there. We got the little snail. I've forgotten. In Pamela Coleman Smith's art, there is also a snail at the bottom of the card. So there's that echo there for us. We got the light streaming into the dragon's cave. Beautiful, happy, um, a bucolic scene, right? Very pastoral, very happy, and worthy of gratitude. That's the way society sees me as having it all, having everything that I need. And um, I should, I suppose, be grateful for that. And I am grateful for that. That's, but again, this is how society sees me. So how does my family see me? I'm going to make a note of that. The, the Nine of Pentacles was the card. 
just in case it does not come up again, I want to pull it out again. Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so how does my family see me? Do a, I'm not going to do a long shuffle for these. Just in case you're worried. So this is a beautiful deck. It's a gorgeous, it has gorgeous artwork. The cards are lovely. I do not read jumpers, by the way, though interesting. Interestingly, there were two jumpers here, the Hanged Man and the Ten of Wands. I see jump, for me, jumpers are cards saying they're pulling themselves out of the shuffle. Not to look at them, but to they're pulling themselves aside. So, it could possibly come up after my shuffle, but... Okay, what was I saying? Uh, I was saying that this deck has wonderful card stock. Easy to shuffle. Um, not only are the images beautiful, but the deck itself is just phenomenal. And it's made from eco-friendly materials, which I also love. The ink, the paper, the cardstock, all of it is eco-friendly and I love it. So, this question, how does my family see me? How does my family see me? see me how does my family see me now you can see why i don't read jumpers it's because i'm not a good overhand shuffler how does my family see me my family sees me as da, 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 the three of pentacles that's interesting would not have thought that i could see the nine of pentacles as being the way society sees me. The Three of Pentacles as being a collaborative worker. Okay, that's interesting. I like that. I love the Three of Pentacles. Um, here we have two dragons there making their nest for their three eggs, and we see three pentacles down here. So I'm the collaborative one. I'm the one who is able to create what working with other people. That is a surprise to me. Um, not that 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 is a way that I could be perceived, but that my family perceives me that way. Um, maybe it's an indication that they actually do want to work with me, and I haven't paid atten enough attention to that. Um, again, interesting, very interesting. Now, I love that th it's a question about family and these. Two dragons are not building a cathedral like we would see in the deck by as in the art created by Pamela Coleman Smith. These two dragons are creating their nest together, creating a home together. Um, hmm. So, yeah, family sees me as someone who could create a home together, working with with perhaps them. Interesting. Okay, so moving in to the next question. How do my friends see me? I saw them as seeing me as the hermit, but let's see what the deck has to say. Am I the hermit to my friends? Am I the hermit? Am I the hermit? Okay, see, I told you, like, me and overhand shuffling are not friends. Me and Riffle shuffling, best buds. <laughs> Riffle and bridge. This, this deck is just so fun to shuffle. How do my friends see me? How do my friends see me? You may be asking yourself, well, if you don't think you're a good overhand shuffler. Why do you do it? I keep thinking someday, someday my hands are going to figure it out. How do my friends see me? A lot of pentacles showing up, right? Had the nine of pentacles, then the three of pentacles. How do my friends see me? The nine, the nine, oh, the nine of wands. Interesting. They see me as a little bit beat up, but still standing, right? Yeah. They see that I have been through some stuff. 
that it, I've been through some um, some battles, perhaps some uh, some strife, and I am still standing. I may be a little bit wounded. Um, I may be a little bit on fire, but I am still standing, and I do have a defense barrier, a, a defense around me. I am shielded in a way. So um, I don't know if you can hear that, but for some reason, a fire alarm of some sort has gone off, but I do not believe that that is a real thing for our school right now. They might, may be testing. Um, okay, so Nine of Wands. Interesting choice, right? Uh, I like that my uh, friends see me as uh, in the suit of passion and creativity. I like that. Um, but the nine, that I'm a little bit beat up but still standing. See the smoke just gently coming out of this poor little dragon's nose? Oh, goodness. Okay, so here we go to the fourth prompt. How would I love to be seen? How would you love to be seen? How do you want people to see you? When you think of that, when you think of your persona to the world, how do you want your persona to be seen? What mask do you think that you wear? We all wear a mask of some sort in, in our interactions. And that is... A beneficial thing you know if we go around waving our wounded inner child in the faces of everyone around us that does not help us or help them in any way so we all have our masks and our masks may reflect who we really are but they're not the fullness of who we really are our persona are our tools in society and if we can manage our persona, if we can have a, oh, there we go, the alarm is off. If we can have a persona that matches who we think we are, I think we would be much more successful and much more healthy in the, as participants in the world. So how do... How would we love to be seen? How would I love to be seen? How would I love to be seen? The answer is... Da, 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 the devil! Whoa! Okay, that's interesting. First uh, major arcana card here. So I would love to be seen as the tempter. I would love to be seen as somebody who is attractive, but not necessarily attractive in the healthiest of ways, I guess. I guess I'm would love to be seen as a little bit... Now, okay, so the devil card is often the card of addictions, the card of um, our bondage to things or to people or to relationships or to substances, right? Our, or, or to habitual patterns of behavior. That's the devil card. But the devil card can also mean other things. The devil card can be the enjoyment of the material realm. It could be the Christian perception of Sophia as the wisdom of God who created the earth and is here in the midst of it all, in the midst of creation, and sometimes gets a bad rap. And that bad rap in one instance could be seen as the devil, as Satan, as um, Lucifer, as the descended angel. So the devil card could also be spirit enjoying the material. It could be spirit here, not trying to escape, not trying to um, become anything other than it is, but rather enjoying the pleasures and the delights of the physical realm, which can become um, dark, which can slide off into addictions, right? But it doesn't always have to be addictions. It could be the enjoy enjoyment of, the pleasure of. It could be sexual pleasure. It could be sexuality as well. 
So how would I love to be seen? I think that's the side of the devil that this card is showing to me. I'd love to be seen as the sensual, sexual uh, appreciator and the sed seducer, but in a positive sense of those around me. There is a positive sense of to seduction that come play, come enjoy, come feel, come enjoy the sensory experiences. There is a place for that in all of our lives, I believe. And so that, I think, is the how I would love to be seen by the world, indicated by this card. So, who am I actually? Who am I actually? And I can, I can kind of see that. I can see my... Uh, devilish side my devilish grin <laughs> I, that seems accurate to me so i've got the devil for how would i love to be seen but now here is where the rubber hits the road right who am i actually who am i actually what do you think what card is going to come up for this very profound question of who am i actually Am I actually the hanged man? Am I actually something else? Someone else? One, two, three. Who am I actually? Who am I really? Who am I really? Am I really? And the $10 million question, who am I really? The answer is, I am the Queen of Wands. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. The Queen of Wands, independent, creative, um, passionate. Sexual, as uh, the sexuality of the devil, right? The, uh, let's see, the nine of pentacles, the appreciation of what they have and are able to work with what they have. I don't see the queen of Pen wands as being not grateful. I think the queen of wands is very grateful for the resources that she has and the passion to create from them. Love the <clears throat> sunflower in her mouth. Sunflowers are the queen of wands, right? There's usually a black cat for the queen of wands. Uh, I don't see the cat. I see a black butterfly. So that might be the echo, the black butterfly instead of the black, black cat. we got two lions here on the tree giving us that Leo uh, fire suit energy. The fire suit symbols. It's a beautiful card. I love the crown on her head. So I will totally... Swing, go with that. Yes. If I am the Queen of Wands, I am very, very happy. I'm very, very happy. Okay, so let me pull out the cards and lay them out for you, for us to look at together, just briefly. So, who am I? Actually, I'm the Queen of Wands. Who, let's see, so I've got the Nine of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles, <clears throat> the Devil, and the Nine of Wands. So, so pentacles and wands, right? Five of, five of wands, the lovers, the eight of cups, ten of wands, three, swords, king, seven of pentacles. I like the seven of pentacles too. That's one of my favorite cards. Uh, let's see, where are we? Justice, king of wands, five of swords, five of pentacles, queen, strong, seven of cups, wands, what's on? hierophant. Oh, no, the Hierophant. Yeah, that's the Hierophant. Okay, yeah, that's the Hierophant. Um, come on, babies. Where are you? The Nine nine of Pentacles. Yes, there we are. That's our first card. The Nine of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles. And let's see, the Devil. I probably passed the Devil already. Let's see, the Three of Wands. Here we go. Sun, Fool. Love the Fool. Love the Fool in this deck. Ace of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles. Here we go. So, 
We've got the Nine of Wands. There we go. And the devil. The devil made me do it. Where are you? There you are. Okay. So here we go. So this is what the Tarot says to me. Yeah. I think the society, that society sees me as the Hierophant, but I'm actually the Nine of... They actually see me as the Nine of Pentacles. And there's some overlap, I think, here in this deck. There's the idea of this uh, figure being in a cave, which reminds me of the Hermit a little bit. Yeah? Appreciating what they have. The, uh, the Hierophant probably does appreciate what they have. Interesting. Um, instead of the Eight of Cups, my family sees me as a creator, a co-creator of home, which is interesting and surprising. And I'm going to need to think about that. That's not what, that's not the news that I've gotten from Chicago. Um, that's where my family lives, by the way. So the hermit is what I think my friends see me as, and they see me as... Um, Maybe the Nine of Wands. That's interesting. So, society thinks that I have every... I should be grateful. That I have everything that I need. And that I am this grateful being basking in the sun, light of the sun. My family thinks that I'm a co-creator of family and home, I think which is interesting. Um, my friends, on the other hand, see me as somebody who's been knocked around by life, but still standing. Um, and different from all of that, I apparently want to see myself not as the conduit to the unconscious, but the tempter to sensual pleasures. And I can, I can possibly, I could see both of these as being my desire, actually. And who am I really? I'm not really the hanged man, but rather I am the creatrix of my universe. I am the queen of wands, the passionate creator, the sensual one, which reflects a little bit of this and also joins up to the way my friends see me. They don't see me in all of my glory. They see me as being a little be bit beaten up, but they see me as the red dragon, right? And I want to be the white dragon. I want to be the one that will come here, see how enjoyable things are can be with me, see how we can experience this material realm in delight and wonder together. Such an interesting reading, such an interesting group of cards, and very different from last year. So friends, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think this... The answers from the Tarot are more accurate from your perception of me. Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you do a new hashtag of this, if you do a new VR to this hashtag, uh, also comment below and I'll go and check yours out as well. And uh, yeah, friends. Uh, if you are still here, hit the thumbs up button so that YouTube knows that you got something out of this and other people will get something out of it as well. It draws eyes to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and um, hit the alarm bell so you get notifications of when I upload videos. I tend to do two a week. I will sometimes do three if I have time. And uh, comment below. I really, would really love to hear what you think about this about these cards, about my interpretation of the cards, my interpretation of this spreads, these spreads, because there are really two spreads here, top and bottom. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.